Hey guys, so today is May the 9th and we're gonna get started mowing Triticale. This morning, our local dealer brought this tractor over. It's a Massey 6S. I'm gonna be talking a lot more about this. We were trying to hook it up to the mower and the, uh, the draw bar was a little bit too big. So they're working on getting us another draw bar. We have our 7220 on the mower right now. We'll just have to start the old fashioned way and then we can try out the new fancy machine. I did four rounds and then they got back with a different draw bar, so we're working on getting that set up. We got the Massey up and running. It's going pretty good. They are riding with me a little bit and I was just focusing on learning how to use it. It's a pretty high tech. So this is the new 6S series from Massey Ferguson. From what they were telling me, there's about 12 of these tractors in existence right now. And uh, this is the only one in North America. They wanted me to run it for a little while see what I think of it so it's 180 horsepower four-cylinder engine though so it's a, a smaller engine with a lot of power should be better for fuel efficiency and uh, it's just not too bulky of a tractor with some decent power on it it's all decked out with the, uh, the CVT transmission and the touchscreen display and everything so I'm just kind of learning how to use all this We got the, the crimping rollers tight and this heavy crop is actually working the tractor pretty hard. This section here, the wind actually knocked it down. It was just so heavy. Starting on this field, we're right across from the home farm. It's a nice 17 acre field. For a little while there, we were thinking this crop didn't look as tall, but it, it really grew the last week or two now. And, yeah, it's it's up well above my waist and uh, just heavy stuff. It's looking really good. So this control is pretty handy. So I have the jo joystick right there to control the number one and number two hydraulic functions. So I have those on the mower for up and down and side to side. So that's really easy. Just control that with my thumb. And then you can preset speeds. So I have C1 as my high speed for mowing and then I can slow down the end with C2. So I'm just using my joystick a little bit to adjust around the curve there. Now we'll come into the end and I'll just hit C2 and drop it down. Uh, I can't do all this at once. So I got the first field mode. So I'm gonna head to the other farm that we rent now. So I'm starting at this farm now. We got 29 acres to cut bunch of smaller fields I'm letting my dad run a little bit definitely awkward at first he's getting it though got crimping rollers in that mower just want to bust the stalk up you can see how the stalks are kind of beat up uh, it just helps them dry a lot better if we can roll them tight we're gonna put a bunch of this in the silo and then we want to make a couple ag bags try to get it down to 60 65 percent moisture or something like that so we're getting in mode and then we're gonna run over it with the tagger just to spread it out more help it dry
try a new type of fertilizer this year to compare. It's called Explore, it's uh, organic nitrogen. So we normally use UAN and uh, this stuff was kind of looking on behind, but it's actually caught up a decent bit. This field here was uh, the Explore fertilizer and yeah, it's really tall stuff, looks good. We're gonna get some forage samples from the different fields to compare the protein levels and see what we think of it. Yeah, I think I'm actually gonna call it quits for the night. It's about 9 p.m. No reason to work too late, we'll finish in the morning. Cows are being milked for the third time. That's the next morning, running again. Just two more fields to do. Finishing up the last field of Triticale right now. See if I can get it all in one pass. Ah, oh, no. Not quite. It's kind of unsatisfying. We decided we're going to harvest the first cutting alfalfa this week as well. So this is a Triticale field, and I'm starting this alfalfa now. It's shorter, but it's a crop that'll grow back. We harvest it five times a season, whereas this trade cow is just one time, and then we're gonna plant corn or soybeans in there. So we got everything mowed. We were just out checking some of the triticale we mowed yesterday at the beginning, and it's already starting to get dry to the point where we probably should start raking. Our custom guy we rent the rake from, he just dropped his rake off there. We're gonna hook it up to this tractor. We'll go unhook the mower. This is the rake we're gonna be running. They had it here for a little bit when we were doing rye a couple weeks ago, but I never actually got to use this one. Head over to the shop first. We'll put some more depth in this tractor and change the PTO shaft. This is our 540 shaft. It's a little different than the John Deere's. You just have these six nuts to take off. I guess this is a new tractor. The 540 hasn't been used yet. It's got this wax coat on it. nuts off pulled it off there's a collar on and then you put the 540 on so we can get this hooked up it goes on to the two-point hitch there got it hooked up
want to make sure we're set low enough. So I don't want to rake too low because we'll be picking up dirt, gets in the feed. We're just going to leave it the way it is. If the ground dips down at all, it leaves a little bit, some spots, but then it's hitting the dirt over there a little, so we better just run like this. So in the past, we've always used a wheel rake. It's a V-shaped rake. With those, the nice thing is you can run really fast, but they don't make near as nice of a row. Our guy was telling us the chopping after one of these rakes is a lot easier because it doesn't make big clumps. It's kind of a smoother windrow. It's really easy to run, especially with this tractor. So one difference I'm noticing with this rake is it makes a very definite edge right at the edge of your pass. It's actually a straight line there. With the wheel rake, it would not cut an exact edge. There'd be a little bit sticking out. I'm gonna go to bed now, it's 8.30. We'll get started in the morning then. It's a beautiful night. So it's morning again. We're gonna start raking pretty soon. It's also getting fit to plant corn, so we're kind of thinking if we can run the rake and the corn planter for a while today, it'd be good. Tether's on this tractor still. I'm gonna unhook it. We're not gonna need to tether anymore. gonna take a shovel out to the field back here I want to see what the ground is actually looking like if it's dry enough today's Wednesday we got three inches of rain Friday and Saturday so it's four days ago and uh, we were just thinking it's gonna be all muddy but the ground seemed to take it really well and uh, we've had warm dry weather for the last few days so it's probably gonna be getting fit to make a ball and then roll it away and see if it breaks if it stays in a the ball, then it's probably a little too wet. Yeah, I would say this field's not quite ready. A good bit of our ground that we need to plant is on higher land with some rocks. So if I start over there, it's probably gonna be ready to go. This uh, this is a field coming out of alfalfa, so there's more root mass there. It's not gonna dry as quick. So we're not really in a big rush to plant. I'm just gonna let that sit there for now. I'm gonna go start raking this tray cow. I think it's gonna get dry enough. We better get going with the rake. So this tractor goes 25 miles per hour. Definitely smooth on the road. This farm we have corn planted already. So this farm we just rotate every year. Half the acres get corn, the other half have triticale that was growing over winter and then we no-till beans into those. So these fields after we harvest this will all get soybeans and we got the corn already planted. Gonna start at that field on the top there. So we farm in these strips, they're about 120 feet wide, and it's, they're put in that way to reduce erosion down the hill. Uh, this way we're always farming across the, the hill, so you don't have rows that the water would run down. So we do all no-till now, probably wouldn't be as necessary to have the strips. It is the ideal way to manage it to help keep the soil in place. To get to this farm, we have to go over a main road. The home place is right over there. It's not actually that far, but it is about a mile on the road. We've been renting this ground for 15 years or something. I like this farm. Uh, it's feeling good. It's got some dew laying on it now, so it probably feels wetter than it actually is. It's gonna be a nice sunny day, breezy again. We wanna make sure we don't get the stuff too dry. Planning to start chopping then in a couple hours. Gonna keep raking. chopper just got here they're getting started chop it up we're gonna blow it in the silo first that second stave silo fill that one most of the way full and then we're gonna make some ag bags the plan is then to put that first cutting off alpha on top of the silo at the end should have settled down a little bit so that's the plan going forward and see how that works out So 
that's a Massey Ferguson 8S 285. But it's another new one just like the 6S that we're trying. They're getting a chance to run it for a little bit. try and finish the raking up and then I'm gonna have to watch that silo as it's getting fuller. So we did not tet out the alfalfa we mowed yesterday. That's a lighter crop. Look at all those turkey buzzards. Just about done, I'm doing my outside two passes. We gotta rake the alfalfa at some point, unless someone else does that. I'm gonna go climb that silo now and we'll see how full it's getting. We got the first load coming in from the other farm now. So I got back here. My dad actually just climbed the silo because I didn't get here in time. And it's maybe two thirds full. So we're actually gonna be filling some ag bags then back here. They're gonna actually switch over to that now. Two weeks ago, we made this eight foot diameter ag bag for rye. We're feeding that right now. Um, now we're making some 10 foot diameter bags, a little bit bigger. Trying to fit them along here. Got about a hundred feet to make them. Not a lot of space, but it'll work. We have a different tractor on there. It needs a little more horsepower to run this bagger, so they're running a bigger Massey on there. Maybe I'll have to go ride along in that 8S. I'm just gonna park this in the shed because we're not gonna get to it today. Too much stuff going on. It's a little bit wet anyway. It's not really fit to start. We'll probably try tomorrow. I'm just watching them. Uh, they're gonna do this bag, switch back to the silo while we get another bag started. We got room for probably three bags across this area. Gotta sweep this feed in. Ideally, we would have a bigger silo to fit everything in there. We're trying to think, should we put up a bunk for our spring forage instead of trying to do the silos and bags? 
or should we put up a bigger silo or should we just keep doing what we're doing i don't know so yeah we went with a 10 foot bag just so it takes less of them could have put an eight footer in but then just have to start and stop a lot more so they're still filling the bag back there i decided to climb this silo just to see where it's at decent bit above half definitely a lot of space in there though our plan is to put more triticale in but leave some space at the top and then we're going to put that alfalfa on top of it so we're going to have to level the triticale alfalfa on top with the level that and then set the unloader up we have to feed the silo right away so it'd be nice to be able to keep feeding that that rye egg bag from a couple weeks ago because that feed's kind of fermented already so this will be the last wagon we'll put in this bag i got the skiller over i'm going to help him move that back stop behind the ag bag there so with a 10 foot diameter bag you can get a ton and a half per foot Eight foot diameter is one ton per foot, so it's 50% more. We got the backstop moved over. It's got these cables attached to the bagger, and uh, so it has this backstop, keeps pressure on the bag so it can just pack that feed in there as tight as possible. We got Andrew helping us out. He's raking with the uh, 6S. Raking up the alfalfa. They're working on the second bag now. My dad had mixed up the feed. I just ran it out. Once they finish this second bag, they're gonna go back to the silo, get that as full as we want it while we set the third bag up. And uh, so then while they're filling the third bag, I'm gonna to have to go up to the silo, level it, so we can put the halogen on top. Probably about as complicated as you can make it. Ooh, now we got a cool little tunnel. We got Mike here, he's collecting samples today from the different fertilizers we were trying. They have some different tests they wanna do, but he has a bunch of different samples. They're gonna test for the protein levels, feed quality. Checking the silo, it's getting full now. We got a third bag just about ready to start then. Once we get this silo as full as I want it. Shut them down. We're starting that third bag. Now we're going to level that triticale off at the top. So we put halogen on top. We wouldn't have to level it, but then we wouldn't. The feed would mix as we feed it out for a few weeks. I'd rather that not be the case. Heading up. So it's really too dark in here to see what's going on. We're just going to level these piles out. But we got the silo leveled out. I couldn't really show it, it was too dark in there. Didn't take more than 15, 20 minutes. They're on the last field. It for the triticale now they're starting the first cutting off alpha this crop's a lot lighter it's not going to take very long
trying to make sure it fits in the silo. I can adjust this spout a little bit. I had someone send me this headlamp. It's really handy. I appreciate it. Well, the silo is completely full. They're done for uh, our place. They're heading to the next farm. They got more triticale to chop. Finished up that harvest last night. I'm planting corn now this morning. Fields are fit. I, uh, I figure I'll just continue this video. It might get a little long, but whoever wants to watch and keep watching. The silo is still not set up. This morning we want to get that leveled again and then get the unloader going. Dad's working at the feeding right now. I'm getting some corn in the ground. So we're farming these fields a little bit different this year. That's our new heifer barn there. And we seeded a bunch of grass. We're gonna put a fence up around that pretty soon. Once we have grass established in there, we're gonna be able to let the dry cows and heifers into that area. It kind of had an awkward end to these fields and now it's a straight end. It kind of works out pretty good for us. I'll load this corn planter up again. I'm just gonna top off the fertilizer. Just like to check my opener discs every once in a while. Fertilizers in, we're just topping it off with water. Some people were asking what these boxes in the back are. These are the seed boxes across the front. These are just for uh, insecticide. You can put granular insecticide in them. We don't use them. Uh, maybe you can put fertilizer in there too. I don't know what all they're used for. It just drops it out behind these down this tube. So I'm gonna head over to what we call the quarry farm. It's a 30 acre farm, uh, a couple miles from home. I like to lock the marker arms down when I'm driving on the road. I just wouldn't want to bump the lever and clip a telephone pole or a car or something. Got some high spots with rocks. This is where we had first started doing no-till planting. This field has woods all the way around it. So if the rocks don't stick up too much, I'll go over them just slowly. If it's something that the chopper can hit or something, I'll lift the planter up so you know there's something up. So these trees just kind of encroach on the field more and more every year. Sometimes we get a guy in who has a excavator with a mower type thing on it and he can just push that all back and cut it back. This field was just a rye cover crop. It's cereal rye. We can either harvest it or just spray it earlier in the spring and then plant into it. If we want to harvest it, we do plant a higher population. I will put fertilizer on so we get a, a good yield. We like to have something growing all the time. So my uncle's gonna take over for a little bit. We're gonna go get that silo leveled off and get the unloader working. Yeah, it looks like he's getting it. We got our old blower fired up just to send some air up the silo. We're gonna level it out, get that unloader set up. It's full all the way to the top, so I'm gonna come up the outside and just jump in the top. Although I, maybe I should go up the inside because it might have settled some and I gotta open the door up. So there's an outside ladder there at the fill pipe. And then there's the chute. This is where the feed falls down. And there's doors that can open these up into the inside to let the unloader blow feed out. And they also have these rungs on as you can climb them.
we got the silo leveled out, set the unloader up. I had to bring this cord up to shoot uh, to power it. Plugged it in. So I'm just gonna let my dad know it's ready and run it. With these silos, you have to feed out of them right away because this feed is exposed to oxygen, so it would spoil, start to mold. But if you're taking a layer off every day, it'll stay fresh. So it's just got an auger with teeth on it, pulls it to the center, and then there's that fan. Just blow it out, and it'll drop down the uh, chute to the feed room. He was just getting out enough for the dry cow batch. We just put a little bit of halogen in that. We'll have to run it more later. Another one half the way around. So we got the silo done. I need to go take over from my uncle again soon, but we're gonna just cover the ends of these ag bags. We're pretty happy with how this worked out. Three bags, still have room to get around them. And uh, kind of glad we went with the 10 footers just because would have made a whole lot more eight foot bags. The 10 footers are kind of nice because it's a little less plastic. Should be a little bit easier to scoop out of. We'll just seal it up good, keep the air out. I'm heading back out to take over from my uncle. Working my way over some of the rockier spots now. I can't imagine trying to come through with a plow or a disc in this field. They used to do it, it's crazy. Neighbors boxers had to stop out and say hi. So I got done at the quarry farm, loaded up the planter again. We're switching to a different type of uh, starter fertilizer. We got that big tote all emptied out. So I'm gonna dump this jug in and then we'll put some water in there. We switched to a different type of corn seed now. We were planting the BMR silage corn. Uh, we we're putting the bunkers for the cows. We got two bunks worth of that done. Now we're planting some dual purpose corn. This stuff we could let go in the fall and harvest as grain if we want to, or uh, chop it. We would still make decent silage corn, not quite as good as the, the BMR. If we would have a little bit of a down year, not as good at yields, we'd be able to chop this up too. We do have a little bit more BMR corn we're gonna be planting later in a couple weeks. We wanna have it separated by a decent amount of time at harvest. 